I'm Alana Daly with Central Hudson, and today I'm joined by Alex Mayer from Hudson Valley Weather to share his um, insights into the weather that we've been experiencing here in the Mid-Hudson Valley since Tuesday. So Alex, thanks you so much for taking time out of your day to speak with me and um, share some insights with our customers. It's good to see you again. Good to see you. Last time we were together, we were talking about hurricane season, and now here we are talking about uh, the possible impacts of a tropical storm. Yeah, I didn't really want to talk to you again anytime soon. I was hoping we'd I, wait till the winter or something, but uh, here apologize. we are. <laughs> I won't blame you. So as I said, this has been a pretty impactful week for our customers. Over 30,000 of our customers have been impacted since Tuesday. Um, and it seems that every time uh, you know, we're making good progress in the field, another storm crops up. You know, initially we saw um, some heavy damage in the High Park area, Central Dutchess County. Then yesterday there was a significant storm in the Coxary, Coxsackie area of Greene County. And then late last night, as I know you're familiar with, there was pretty significant thunderstorms, I believe in Dutchess and Ulster County. So um, maybe Alex, you could start by um, giving us a little recap of the week, um, what kind of different storms we saw, and um, we'll start there. Yeah, so as you mentioned, Alana, it's been a uh, tumultuous week from a weather standpoint. Uh, it's certainly been keeping us busy um, and getting very good use of our new storm packs map for sure. Um, unfortunately, we've had uh, personal property damage and utility damage because of these storms. Um, the pattern that we've been in these last couple days would be best described as uh, stagnant in the fact that uh, this entire region has kind of been stuck along a stalled boundary. A cold front has been kind of draped across the region, not really moving much. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, with the afternoon heat and humidity, um, it creates just enough instability where we've got we've had these pop up thunderstorms almost every afternoon and evening. And in most cases, these fronts just pass through and you get your one round of thunderstorms. They're fairly fast moving and they're done. Um, when you get into a situation where you have a stall boundary, um, as long as that boundary is present, storms can just continue to fire along it. Um, so, you know, Tuesday, cold front dragged south, uh, impacted Southern Duchess along the I-84 corridor. Then the cold front was pushed back north, which resulted in storms, uh, Greene County, Columbia, Ulster and Duchess yesterday. Now that cold front dragged south last night and is being pushed north again, but this time it's being pushed north by the incoming remains of Elsa. So, you know, just kind of have this tug of war going on right now between these frontal boundaries, which is just keeping us locked into this in climate round of weather. Um, and, you know, we've, we, as we continue to roll out this new storm packs graphic, we've learned, uh, you know, it, it isn't always uh, a perfect science to nail down the amount of outages that can occur. Um, you take the storm that impacted uh, the High Park uh, region through Millbrook, um, and you take that same storm and put it over the Catskills, and there certainly wouldn't have been almost 30,000 power outages. So, you know, when, when these storms decide to pop up and cross through heavy populated areas like along Route 9, um, obviously it can have large spikes on the outages and heavier impacts on the utilities. Um, so it's... Uh, it's definitely been a, a pretty hectic few days. Yeah, uh, to say the least. Um, you know, some of the news reports we're seeing, there's speculation that there could have been potentially a tornado or a microburst, perhaps in Greene County. Um, do you have any comments on that? I, you know, I think the analysis is still being done, but have we seen, uh, in addition to severe thunderstorms, are we seeing any of these other major impacts um, throughout the Mid-Hudson Valley? Yeah, so at, at best guess, um, I spend a lot of time looking at the radar. And one of the things I, I, I tend to, to keep a close eye on during severe weather is the velocity uh, signature of thunderstorms, and that being the radar's depiction of rotation. Um, there was never much strong rotation in any of the storms we've had since Tuesday, so I wasn't surprised to see the damage reports uh, out of Bowdoin Park coming back from Dutchess County earlier of being a microburst. I would, uh, I'm, I'm gonna guess that it's gonna be a similar outcome for the High Park Millbrook. 
uh, and potentially even the uh, Coxsackie region. Um, you know, basically, not until the National Weather Service survey crews can do their analysis will we know for sure. And mm -hmm. what they essentially look for is damage patterns. Uh, you know, straight line winds, they tend to see all of the damage on the same sides of houses, all the trees folded in the same direction. Okay. Microbursts tend to fold damage in an outward direction in all directions from the from the area of the microburst. And then obviously tornadoes turn uh, out a more circular damage pattern and twist and bend the, the debris. So when those crews go out, they'll they'll make that determination. But this pattern has been very supportive of microbursts more than rotating thunderstorms and tornadoes. Okay. So right before you and I started this conversation, uh, Central Hudson had about 4,200 4, customers without power, and we still had um, 159 outage locations that we had to report to. So been very busy. It's all hands on deck here, as it always is. Um, our crews are busy in the field. Um, but as I said before, it seems like once we make some good progress, another storm blows through. What can we expect here in the Hudson Valley this afternoon going into this evening? So right now we're seeing thunderstorms in a lineal pattern from Sullivan County through Ulster. So far, those storms have been non-severe, which is to be expected. Um, last night's uh, storm that impacted the same region tend is, uh, storms tend to drain the atmosphere of their instability. So it didn't leave much for the morning storms to feed off of. So, so far the morning storms have been more torrential downpours, lightning strikes, and some gusty winds. None of today's storms have been uh, severe warned just yet. This afternoon, the determining factor of whether or not we see more of these storms become strong to severe is going to be exactly that. Will, will the atmosphere regain enough instability this afternoon to support those type of thunderstorms? That's highly dependent on does the cloud cover linger into the afternoon? Does the sun come out? There's a lot of um, determining factors that will, will lead, lead us in either direction of more of what we're seeing now, just heavy tropical downpours and mm -hmm. lightning and thunder versus more potential microburst, straight line winds and severe warned strong thunderstorms. Um, so we'll have to kind of monitor that, monitor that throughout the afternoon. And then at the same time approaching from the south, we have the remains of Elsa and uh, that that will bring a, a different type of weather to the region. Yeah, and I'd uh, like to talk about that. One thing, I, if, I, if you don't mind, Alex, I would like to just sure. mention in terms of public safety, I believe that there are flash flood warnings in certain areas of the uh, of the Mid-Hudson Valley. So I just warn our customers, be safe out there, because even if it doesn't cause power outages, there are other um, considerations with this type of weather. Um, but please, I think everybody is thinking, what can we expect from this weekend and this tropical storm that's um, headed uh, to the northeast? So Elsa is tracking up the coast. Uh, you know, it's it's very expected in situations like this that we see uh, uh, some wobbles in the overall track of the storm. So, you know, it, it's wobbled west, it's wobbled east. You know, we'll, we'll see where the final track ultimately ends up being. But the data continues to support a soaking rain, especially okay. in the southeastern parts of this region. Uh, the northwest seems the northwest part of the region, Delaware, northwest Ulster, Green County tend to be on the outer fringe of the heaviest rainfall. But those are coincidentally the areas seeing the heaviest rainfall this morning. Right. So and those are the areas under flash flood warnings at the moment and areas to our southwest and southeast have flash flood watches in effect for the remains of Elsa coming up the coast. Uh, we don't expect severe weather associated with Elsa, more of just a widespread heavy soaking rainfall. Some models are projecting a general one to three inches. Some are saying that parts of the southern, extreme southern Hudson Valley, maybe southern Duchess and Point South could see in excess of three inches of rainfall. That in combination with the days of rainfall we've already seen from these thunderstorms, could of course continue to exacerbate the flash flooding situation. But again, once we get past this afternoon, 
the nature of the rainfall will go from being uh, less of the convective nature that we're seeing currently and mm-hmm. more towards just widespread soaking tropical rainfall. And then obviously the storm pulls away by early morning to mid morning tomorrow. And okay. then we head into the weekend. Saturday looks um, somewhat calm. And then unfortunately we, we head back into the same pattern for the second half of the weekend into early next week with increasing heat and humidity and potential for more stalled frontal boundaries and more in climate weather. Okay, not exactly what I wanted to hear, Alex, but um, I'm full of of good news. Yeah, uh, well, either way, you know, it's important for our customers to know we're prepared to respond and we'll continue responding until every customer is restored. We have additional crews on site um, and, you know, we're working uh, day and night to get our customers on as quickly as possible. Um, I'd like to remind everyone for the latest weather forecast to visit our partners, um, Alex's website at HudsonValleyWeather.com. Uh, for Central Hudson storm information, please visit CentralHudson.com. And um, Alex, I'd like to thank you for your time today. Of course, everyone be safe out there. And uh, obviously a special thanks to all of our utility crews out there away from families weathering all of this to keep things going and and communities moving forward. I know it's probably been a a tough couple days and uh, it's nice knowing that we have Central Hudson in our corner. That's very kind of you. Thank you, Alex. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you.